Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. Today we're going to play the Georgia Shuffle. <laughs> shuffles in country music, the Nashville Shuffle, the Georgia Shuffle and the Double Shuffle. I've done videos on both of the other two so it's finally time for the Georgia Shuffle which I actually think is the most useful of the shuffles. But it's also uh, pretty difficult to explain and so rather than try and explain it and then demonstrate it I'm going to explain it at the end and uh, you'll see why at the end that's a good idea. So we're going to start off with an up bow. So, it's, it, as I say, it starts with an up bow, which is unusual. The accents are all on a down bow. So whereas the Nashville Shuffle alternated accents with up and down, all of the accents here are on the down. Um, it places emphasis on the two and the four. So if you're counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, four, that's where it's putting the emphasis. And that emphasis comes naturally from the bow because uh, you're putting three eighth notes in a slur and the down bow is, although it's the same length as one of those eighth notes, it's got to go three times as fast and therefore it creates a natural accent. Every time you do that down bow it's got to move three times as fast as the up bow, which you don't really have to think about. And what we're doing is putting the emphasis on the backbeat. So let's try it again, and this time a bit faster. Again, starting on up bow, one, two, three, four. Now let's try another pattern, this time uh, not repeating notes but going straight up a scale. And you've got to get this so that your right hand basically knows the pattern and you don't really have to tell you what to do. Let's now do a pentatonic pattern. One thing you can do with the Georgia Shuffle is when you do the accent on the down bow you go from playing a single string to two strings and that's pretty easy because just pressing down harder naturally um, goes onto the second string. Now we're going to try a tune the 8th of January and this is a tune that naturally fits into this rhythm. Uh, some tunes gravitate naturally towards one shuffle or the other. Uh, Old Joe Clark, for example, is a, an obvious one to do with the Nashville shuffle, uh, but 8th of January is a good one for the Georgia. Generally tunes with str long strings of 8th notes are good for this shuffle. I'll give you the basic tune. with some backing. Incidentally, is named. 
after the battle which happened on the 8th of January when General Andrew Jackson uh, defeated the British at New Orleans and <laughs> drove them out. Uh, his, his was a small and poorly equipped army and um, the British army was uh, 8,000 men and uh, they were routed. So, serves us right. Um, let's try the 8th of January again and we'll do it a bit faster this time. that it really drives the thing along. It's also smoother than the Nashville Shuffle because it's got more slurs and um, it's easier I think having all the accents on a down rather than them constantly going up and down. But I would say don't try to play every tune with a single shuffle except when you're learning that shuffle. If you're learning a shuffle it's, it's a great idea to try playing any tune all the way through with one of these shuffles. So for example let's try Old Joe Clark which I've said is perfect for the um, Nashville Shuffle. Uh, let's just see what happens. <laughs> it broke down already. Um, so you really have to force yourself to accept the fact that some of the notes are just not going to appear. rendition of that tune but if you spend enough time and modified it enough putting in extra notes and perhaps taking out a few notes then you certainly could make it work. Your long-term goal is to be able to dip in and out of one shuffle or the other shuffle um, and make the best of each kind of phrase in a tune and that really is a long-term goal it takes uh, a lot of um, knowledge with, <laughs> with your right hand and preferably not thinking about your right hand at all. Uh, it is possible to improvise using one of these shuffles and I will just try and do an improvisation on the 8th of January uh, just using the Georgia Shuffle. Mm -hmm. get a bit tedious doing the same one all the time but as I say if you want to practice the shuffle and get it really natural then that's the way to do it either forcing it on a tune or else forcing yourself to improvise only using that and uh, after a few months or years or decades then that will become totally natural and you'll be able to dip in and out of one or the other. Finally I said I wasn't going to explain the Georgia shuffle at the beginning I was going to do it at the end so, why is it so difficult to explain? The main reason is that a single pattern doesn't fit into one bar, as it does with the natural shuffle. So you can explain it like this, you start off a bar with a two notes slurred on and up, down, then three notes slurred, 
single. So the way you start the pattern starts with two notes slurred and the way you continue it is three notes slurred, which is a bit unfortunate. The other way to explain it is to start before the bar line with three notes slurred. One, two, three, four. So that way you get the same pattern all the way through from the beginning, three notes slurred, but it starts before the bar. So if you start off trying to explain that to someone, then they're probably going to want to give up <laughs> before they've even started. So if you want to teach this to someone, start off as I did, just by showing how it works and then um, explain it at the end. So I hope this made sense. I hope you will use the Georgia Shuffle more often. In fact, I use this a lot more often than I do the Nashville Shuffle. Um, if you send me an email, subscribe, I will send you a copy of all the dots and hopefully you'll get to master this pretty quickly. See you again soon.